started in my childhood when I was uh, seven years old. I was going with my parents for a really nice uh, river trip and that was the first time I saw Milky Way and after that I was wondering all the time like how it's like to be up there, what's up there. As a kid um, I used to watch the night skies quite a bit in the backyard and uh, watch a lot of meteors and uh, this eventually got me interested to join the planetarium and I was going to summer school in the planetarium and so on and um, eventually as I grew up uh, I started building a lot of tiny projects for myself like tiny red light LED strips for my telescope um, tiny thermal sensors to make sure that my lenses were not fogging up with the telescope and this kind of got me more and more interested on the engineering side of the astronomy projects that I had and eventually I was going on a lot of night treks, doing a lot of amateur astronomy. I was also in um, Hanle, the highest of the way in the world and this definitely laid a nice foundation for me understanding that I want to be in space electronics and communication. Uh, so working in space field was my childhood dream. So it, it started with like watching space videos and all the planets and stuff and especially cosmos so yeah that's how I started loving space and here I am so especially the things that you can see as a child around you um, definitely influenced me because um, uh, reading some interesting books and um, seeing some uh, movies where the, the uh, theme of space was definitely um, uh, well um, well explained and uh, fascinated me definitely as a child so um, in the end I always um, tried to uh, get a little bit towards um, those interesting topics and um, the best idea for that was to go into the STEM fields um, uh, a little bit more in depth In all of the endeavors to build rocketry in the past, the Carbon Line has always been a first step. And I think that reaching this goal as a student group is going to propel us into the next phases of space exploration in the amateur community. So that is what the target means for me. It's establishing a benchmark from which we can build a brighter future. Uh, getting to Carmen Line and building a rocket that, that goes to space uh, helps me uh, get closer to my dream. As a kid, uh, I was fascinated by space and, and, and uh, like the, the engineering and technologies uh, all raised to space, the, the rockets, the, the spacecraft, the International Space Station. And, and uh, as an amateur, I always thought that it's the only, only the professionals who could do it. But now as, as I'm part of this team who is uh, achieving this, uh, this feat, and I'm really lucky to be a part of this team uh, as it's my first concrete, uh, concrete step towards, towards my dream. Um, I believe that uh, the most important thing is the challenge. Uh, it's a really difficult uh, endeavor to actually get to the common line, especially as students. So uh, if we decide that we want to do this and we actually make it and if a group of students without um, any prior uh, backing can actually do this, it means anybody can and this challenge is what's the most important thing to me. Um, I see that uh, we run a lot of simulations as part of space engineering. We run a lot of, um, we're in a, part of, a lot of events where we try to network with people and understand how the industry works. Um, here at, at Astra, it's as real as it gets. It's a real-time project that you have to work on, understand how all the different domains come together, and it's kind of like a puzzle. And it's been great to understand how the different domains of management, science and engineering work together. So for my overall development as a space engineer, it's really been great. I think it's experience, and more importantly, real-world experience. Uh, we can always take as many classes, courses, um, look at books and videos to learn engineering but the real engineering takes place in the real world and uh, what experience I gain doing making the rocket hands-on would I would have never been able to do this otherwise. 
yeah, basically um, my um, skills as a technical engineer um, before joining Astra were pretty much non-existent. My motivations were there, um, but um, I definitely had some um, uh, major skills um, that developed only in this um, uh, in the um, process of um, uh, analyzing what we actually need um, uh, to develop our parachute system in my case and uh, then trying to learn that uh, uh, stuff, that specific um, uh, um, uh, task um, and uh, then trying to implement that um, in our um, uh, workflow. So by that I learned um, uh, to work with uh, Git uh, uh, solving um, ODEs with uh, Python and um, uh, modeling with uh, FreeCAD for example. When our project is successful, it shows that space is really not that far and anyone who tries to reach it can reach it. So I think it, it will inspire all the amateurs who, 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 are, who only think that reaching space is something only professionals are capable of. As a kid, I definitely watched a lot of landings on, on TV or um, we saw a lot of um, times when we saw many different winds that were actually maybe belonging to NASA or someone else but we kind of took it personally and felt like we discovered a new capability that humans had. We didn't know we could do something but we, here we are seeing uh, that we were capable of um, sending probes and returning samples so I see every little achievement we can have even as part of Astra to be like a win for everyone else to inspire them to also conduct similar experiments and win together. Yeah. First of all, like uh, work in the space industry, I would love to work on rovers and explorers. So that that was one of the motivation why I started studying space and stuff. And at the India, yeah, obviously, all the space nerds had this uh, goal to go to Mars. So yeah, that's one of my goals as well. I feel like there's lots to be done in the realm of reducing launch costs and also in the realm of reducing the cost of just general manufacturing in space. Uh, it costs millions and millions of dollars just to make very small things that go to space and I think that this, this can be improved and there's definitely room to improve in these, in these places. Uh, so yeah, for my future in the, in the industry, I would like to tackle some of these problems and try to help uh, bring down the cost. Um, for someone who has a lot of love for science, I understand the um, importance of scientific objectives of a mission. And for someone who's worked with engineering, I kind of understand the technical difficulties involved in implementing a particular objective. So uh, for my career, I would like to act like a bridge between the scientific side and the engineering side of uh, space missions. From 20 years before, we were talking about we will have flying cars and we are still looking forward to it. What I'm actually expecting in 20 years is like definitely space tourism, um, new invention. Um, I hope we could reach Mars. Well, uh, I have some pretty crazy ideas about the future of the aerospace industry. Uh, from a realistic standpoint, I think that the industry is moving towards um, is moving towards more of a commercial environment. So there are many different technologies and ideas of uh, of um, niches that can be fulfilled by the space industry. Uh, communication is a big one right now, especially with uh, these mega constellations that are going up that are going to be providing internet services for the world, especially in rural areas. I think that's going to be pretty big in the near future. Um, towards maybe bright and exciting, 
um, because we see that space is becoming so interdisciplinary there's so many other industries involved now and it's taking um, more than just a technical approach there's there's a touristy side to it there's an exploratory side to it so with so many applications and so coming up and so many industries getting involved it definitely is exciting in general for the future mm, well interplanetary travel is the closest thing uh, imagine saying to your friend that this Saturday I'm going to Mars for brunch. So, yeah, I, w- I would uh, really like to co- contribute to an industry who makes this possible. I believe the future could not be any brighter. Uh, with the growth of private aerospace companies and um, the, the ad- advent of rapid development and also the, the momentum we have towards exploration of Moon and Mars, I believe the opportunities are endless. And in the end, I think we are the future of aerospace. So it is what we make it, make of it.